please and turn to Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5. Need the notes for tonight, just hold your hand up, the men are ready to serve you with those. And we'll try to get through as quick as we can. Matthew chapter 5, picking up basically where I left off, a real brief review, and we'll try to finish what we're looking at. The danger and course of anger. Kingdom living, living down here like we're already there because in spirit we already are. We have been translated into the heavenly kingdom, the kingdom of our Savior. So we're to live here differently than we did before and certainly differently than the world. And we're looking at this Sermon on the Mount and in particular looking at the danger and course of anger. I don't know. How aware we are of our anger. We're real good at thinking we got past it. And we have not. In short, if there's not somebody, if there is somebody we cannot honestly look at without being angry, that we can't honestly pray for good things for them, we have a problem. No matter what the situation is, we have to be able to have forgiven. We have to be able to get that anger out. And so Jesus is teaching us that this anger is more than just that moment where you blow up and you say things and go back and say, oh, I'm sorry about that. It's an ongoing anger and whole attitude. So looking at this idea of danger and course of anger. So let God speak to us tonight in a special way. There in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 20. Matthew 5, verse number 20, Jesus speaking, says, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Whoso shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gifts. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Father, help us tonight. Lord, thank you for the good singing, the good spirit. Folks have come out in the middle of the week to sing your praises, to spend some time in prayer, and to be encouraged by your word. Lord, help us today to look at our own hearts, our own lives. And Holy Spirit, should there be some anger in us? Point it out, Lord. Help us rid, rid ourselves of that. Help us be on guard for that. Help us be understanding of those who deal with anger in their own heart. Speak to us tonight like only you can, Lord. Please help us be focused. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Again, we're looking at the Sermon on the Mount, Kingdom Living. We've gone past the Beatitudes, and now he's speaking about just day-to-day -day living, our own existence and our own lives, and we've got so much yet to cover as we look through here. We'll be looking at adultery and divorce and oaths and uh, our neighbors and just all sorts of things God is going to be teaching us. But we're looking now at the danger and course of anger. Now, it's interesting just by the fact that Jesus stopped as he's preaching here and talks about anger. He talks about that thing that is so common to us, that so routine to us, that sometimes we forget how God views it. But as we look at this thing, we saw, first of all, an amazing statement, just by way of review, an amazing statement there in verse number 20, where God speaks about our righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. And we saw that theologically, the fact that, yes, their righteousness was just that, their righteousness, not God's. And so we understand that the only way for us to get to heaven is not our righteousness, but Christ's righteousness. And then also practically by the fact that we have to have the right spirit. Then we saw the authoritative statement that Jesus made. He said, but I say, in verse number 21, but ye have heard it said by them of old time. He said, you've heard what they have said. 
Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you. And so that we have to make the decision, we're always going to listen to what Jesus says. Hello? Regardless of what uh, Grandma taught us, regardless of what the world's philosophy is, regardless of what the, the trend is, regardless of what the, the old time teaching is, if it's not Bible, if it's not what God says, we need to understand that we need to choose what God says, always what God says. And so we've got that authoritative statement. Now tonight then we're going to get right in the lesson about anger. About anger. So notice first of all, the angry spirit. An angry spirit. Verse 22, But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Now he spoke there in verse 21 about thou shalt not kill. But God here has begun to make a shift and try to emphasize to us that God looks beyond our just outward actions, but looks at the heart. He looks at our spirit. He looks what's on the inside. So God warns us about having an angry spirit. Did you ever meet somebody who had an angry spirit? I mean, it just seemed like they're always upset about something, always angry about something, always something stirring, always trying to remember what we call folks like that sometimes. Uh, always got issues going on, always got uh, problems transpiring, always got some sort of routine, going, something going on all the time. But an angry spirit or somebody who maintains that. God warns us, I think you've got some of these verses in your, in your notes there. He warns us about an angry spirit. It's a wrong spirit. Ecclesiastes 7, 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. He says, make sure you're not quick to get angry. Make sure you're not quick to let things get out of control. For anger resteth. In the bosom of fools. In other words, anger hangs on in the bosom of fools. God said if you've got anger in your heart, if it's just hanging on, if it's just lingering there, if it just goes on day after day, He calls us a fool. It lingers, it rests in our heart. And again, if we're not careful, anger will stay there. We may not be burning on the neck anymore. We may have control of our tongue about it. But still on the inside, we're still angry with that person. We're still angry at that deed. And God says, no, if it rests in the bosom, it's a fool. James 1, 19 and 20. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Proverbs 22, 24. Make no friendship with an angry man. He said, be careful. He said, if somebody's got an angry spirit, they're an angry person, he said, don't make friends with them. And with a furious man, thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. So God warns us that hanging around an angry person will give us that same spirit, will give us that same idea, will give us that same nature. He says, so be careful. Do not want to hang around angry people. And again, it can reside in our hearts for weeks, months, and even years. So the angry spirit. And we see, first of all, God says this angry spirit is the spirit of a murderer, is the spirit of a murderer. Notice again in verse 21, he says, Thou hast heard it said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. So he said, Don't be a murderer. Don't murder people. But I say unto you, verse 22, Whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. In verse 21, he says, If you kill, you're in danger of the judgment. In verse 21, it says, If you're angry, Jesus said, I'm telling you, if you're angry with your brother without a cause, you're in danger of the judgment. So it's the spirit of murder. The same kind of attitude, the same kind of heart in that God sees. Now, look down in verse 27. Here's an amazing thing. We're quick to look at verse 27. We're quick to look at that passage. We're quick. Pastors are quick to jump on that passage where it talks about the heart versus the deed. But God talks about the heart and not the deed. Verse 27. Ye have heard it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So many times we preach about that. Boy, don't lust. Don't look. Don't desire. Don't do that because God looks on the heart. You may not do it physically, but God says you already done it in your heart. That's preached a lot. By the way, that's true. Oh, that's true. But that same expression, that same concept over here is with anger. He says you may not have killed him, but you wanted to. 
You may not have killed him, but I'm looking at your heart. You may have not have murdered him, but I've looked at your heart. And if you could have, and you thought you could have without getting a, without getting him thrown in jail, or if you thought you could have and not be punished for it, or if the situation was right, you would have done it. He said, then you've done it already in your heart. Boy, we have to be careful about anger. Because anger not only is the same spirit as a murder, but it's the course of murder. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Most, most murders don't happen. I think I'll murder somebody today. wonder who will be. No, it's anger. And with the exception of those unusual events, those things that have been going on for a while, that anger festers. It goes for weeks, months. And that spirit of anger begins to, to, to boil and the bitterness comes and eventually physical murder. Whoa, we have to be careful. The Bible gives us several pictures of folks who get angry. And that anger then led them to murder or desire to murder. We think of Saul and David. Saul and David. Saul and David. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 18, if you remember... Saul and David are coming back from battle and, and the ladies were out dancing. They were celebrating the great victory and they were singing a song. And David got higher accolades than Saul did. And it says in 1 Samuel 18, And Saul was very wroth. And the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. By the way, I think it's probably an exaggeration on both parts, don't you? I don't think David killed ten thousands, and I don't think Saul killed a thousand. But they were singing, and they praised him, but they gave David more credit. And so it says it displeased him. And he was very wroth, and he was angry. He said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day forward. So from that day forward, Saul was angry. He didn't just was angry that day, it just carried on to the next week and the next month. And we know how he tried to kill David with the javelin and tried to do different things, tried to tempt him to go out into battle and do certain things to get himself killed. And so he, it was just jealousy. Jealousy is a root of much anger. We get angry at people because we're jealous. But we have to be careful about that jealousy. So here's a case where Saul eventually led to murder or attempted murder. He tried to kill David on several occasions because he was angry because of what somebody else said. You and I have to be careful and check our hearts when anger comes. Same thing happened with Saul and his son Jonathan. If you remember, Jonathan was trying to stand up for David later on and Saul was so angry, he tried to kill his own son. He tried to kill, he tried to throw a javelin at Jonathan. He tried to kill Jonathan because Jonathan stood up for David. It, Anger can do that much in our hearts that it would twist us. It carries... Listen, you have anger with one person, it'll carry over anger to somebody else. You get that angry spirit, and pretty soon you're not able to live with anybody. You're not able to talk with anybody. It spreads over. And now you're hurting this person over here because of what they did to you. Now you're over here destroying this relationship because of something somebody else did over here or what you thought they did. We just have to be real careful with that anger. We have to make sure we confess it. We have to make sure we forgive and get it right. So, let's be careful. So, this idea, it's the spirit of a murderer. And it brings about murder if we're not careful. And it's murder inside our heart. But here's a quandary. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.26, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So God warns us about anger. And yet it says, be angry and sin not. We know Jesus was angry, casting them out of the temple, taking the cat and nine tails and turning over the tables and chasing. So we have to look at that. So how, here's the quandary. What, what's the difference? One is righteous indignation. We like to use that phrase. And the other is just sinful Anger. James 1.19, we already read it, says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So, you say, preacher, preacher, how do I know? What's the difference between righteous indignation and sinful anger? If we're angry at sin, the sin itself, 
Then we've got God's anger. If we're mad at the person, we've got our own anger. Are you listening to me? If we're mad at the sin, we're mad at the deed, we're mad at what's done, or that, that's righteous indignation. God, that was wrong what they did. God, that was a terrible thing. That is a vile thing. That is a sinful thing to do. That's God's righteous indignation. But if we say, God, did you see what he did? Did you see what she did? I hope something happens to her, and I'm so mad at her. That's sinful anger. Hello? If we're angry at the mess that sin brings, that's righteous indignation. If we're glad for the mess it brings to somebody we're angry with, that's sin. Say, so preacher, how can I do it? Check your prayers. Check your prayers. If our prayer is for restoration or retaliation, if we have a heart to restore and say, boy, they shouldn't have done that, how can I make this right? Boy, they must have really been mad at me. They must have, how can I make this right? Or, God, would you take care of them? If our prayer is for reconciliation or for retribution. In other words, if, if it's righteous indignation, I won't be glad if the next week they lose their job. If it's righteous indignation, I won't be glad they had a car wreck. If it's righteous indignation, I will not be wanting something bad to happen to them. Or when it does, a little smile comes to my face and says, I knew it, I knew it. No. Let's check our hearts. Check our hearts. Well, I just kind of like going that way. No, Jesus is like being a murderer. He says, don't do that. That anger, that anger, that anger, that spirit of anger. So we have to watch out. That spirit of anger is the spirit of a murderer. Number two, the spirit of anger brings the speech of a murderer. Brings, brings the speech of a murderer. Notice what he says. Verse 22, But I say unto you, Whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever say of his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. Whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Jesus is trying to talk about what happens in our mouth when we've got anger in our heart. When we've got anger in our heart, what comes out of our mouth is murderous. Boy, the tongue can, till, can kill. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Flip over to James chapter 3, if you would, please. James chapter 3. James chapter 3 and verse number 6. Almost preached on this passage the other night. And the tongue, James 3, 6, is a fire, a world of iniquity. So the tongue among our members, so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. He said, man, man has tamed everything, some, to some degree. We can tame the lions, we can tame the serpents, we can tame, uh, we can do all that. Man, is that verse 8? But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. It's poisonous. I just look around here. I, I know in each of your lives, in each of our lives, there's been somebody that we've been poisoned with just their words. Just their words. Poison kills, by the way. You can tell if the arm is broken. You can tell if somebody's been stabbed and they're bleeding. But you can't tell if somebody's, being, if somebody's dying, if you will, spiritually dying or emotionally dying because somebody's angry words. It's a poison. We cannot, tongue, we cannot tame the tongue. We can just control it. We can't tame the tongue. We just got to watch it because it is out of, it's there always ready to go with poison. And we can read on the rest. We'll cover that a little bit later about blessing God and cursing man. It ought not to be so. The word raka back in our text means empty, worthless. So they're just a worthless person. They're just an empty person. So here's what you got to watch for. The anger comes in. And it's not righteous indignation. It's I'm mad at them. I'm mad at them and what they did to me. Or I'm jealous over them and what they did to me. Not the fact that they did something wrong. Not the fact that they stole. Not the fact that they've sinned against God. Not by, but the fact that they stole from me. <laughs> the fact they owe me. The fact they cheated me. The fact they spoke about me. Not the fact that they were, that they were out of control and had a slanderous tongue. But it was about me. And boy, I can hardly wait to see how God's going to take care of them. No. 
That is that murderous spirit. And then what's going to come out of our mouth is first time we get somebody around somebody else who's been hurt, that poison's going to come. Don't say rock. They're worthless. You know, they're just, they're just, I just always knew they were going to be a crook. I just always knew they were going to do that. I just, no, God says, no, no, no. God says, I'm looking on your heart. Thou fool. The word fool there talks about blockhead. It's more than just being silly. It's blockhead. Morally heedless. Just reprobate. Basically almost saying, they're not even saved. I think they're lost. I think they need to get saved. Judging whether or not they're saved or not based upon our anger. Boy, let's be careful about our anger. Amen? Careful about our anger. God says no. So we've got the angry spirit as a spirit of a murderer. He says, boy, in your heart you've already killed him. Just like lusting, you've already committed adultery in the heart. God says just the same set of phrase about our anger. We've murdered already. Well, I, I didn't punch him. No, but you sure wanted to. I didn't burn their house down. No, but you sure were looking for the matches. No, it's the heart. It's the heart. So an angry spirit is the spirit of a murderer. Angry spirit brings the speech of a murderer to kill, destroy. How many here have maybe seen other people destroyed because somebody's angry tongue gossiped? Somebody's angry tongue was talking. How many marriages have been destroyed because one spouse got angry and spoke out? Boy, let's be careful. Watch that tongue. It's full of poison. So God warns us here. He says he's talking about killing. He's talking about murder. And he says it's with anger. And from the anger comes the word. So with an angry spirit. Very quickly, he goes on with this idea of anger. We have an altar sacrilege. An altar sacrilege. We often separate the verse 23 from verse 24. Jesus didn't take a breath. It goes on. Verse 24. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 23. I'm sorry, verse 22 and verse 23. So verse 22, Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever she shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, therefore, it's tying it to the verse before. Therefore, he said, watch out what you say. Watch out. Don't let anger come and mess up your words. Don't let anger come out in poison. Don't let anger come out and, and, and blaspheme people and destroy people. Therefore, now we've got this altar sacrilege. Therefore, if I bring thy gift to the altar, and there, remember, thy brother has aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. So we find the therefore. Because he's warning us about this angry lips, because he's t warning us about our words that come out, he said, therefore, with that in mind, he said, when you come to the altar, can I say it? When you come to church, when you get your quiet time, when you come to worship God, that altar, that's talking about the gift and bringing the gift. That's our worship. So that could be the public altar. It could be when you come to church. Or it could be your private altar where you sit down in the morning or late at night and open up the Word of God and begin to pray. The gift could be the ministry or the service. He said, so when you come into the altar and you're beginning to worship God, and there you remember... The Holy Spirit puts something in your mind that your as brother has ought against you. I wonder what that could be. Therefore, especially if you've been the one who's angry and talked about him. Especially if you've been the one and spoke out. Especially if you've been the one said, Rock, he said, therefore, when you come to the altar and you remember your brother, maybe your brother's ought against you because you were mad at him and you talked out of turn. Let's make sure that regardless whether it's their fault, or their fault or my fault, there's a situation between me and my brother. Therefore, he said, before you alter, bring that gift to the altar, before you worship, before you give it to me, you go first and go settle that. I begin thinking about that. We're in danger. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair statement. We're in danger when we can continue to worship 
if their heart's not right towards somebody else. Amazing grace. Boy, I hate that, brother. I'm go he goes and has a car wreck somewhere. Mm -hmm. Sunday school class, let me tell you how to read your Bible and to pray. But in your heart, you know you've been angry and you've got that bitterness. God says, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. How easy. We're in danger when we feel like we can freely worship and work for God with anger in our heart. We're in real danger when we think we can worship and serve God and minister for God when there's issues in our heart. Are you with me tonight? you follow what I'm saying? We're in danger. We're good about that. We can do that. We'll sing and we'll pretend and we'll smile and we'll teach the Sunday school class. We'll lead the singing. We'll preach the messages. We'll do all those things. But our hearts are not right. God says, I see that. He says, so when you're getting ready to minister, when you're getting ready to pray, when you're getting ready to serve God, He said, and the Holy Spirit reminds you there's something between you and their brother over there. He said, you better get that settled. See, the problem is, once we decide, no, I'm not going to get that right. I'm not going to take care of that issue. I'm not going to deal with that. I'm going to let things just continue as they are, and then I can do that and then pretend, if you will, or think that I'm still worshiping God and think that I'm still serving God. I'm in danger of all kinds of, 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 of apostasy and sin that may come. We have to make sure our hearts are right. Amen? And that's what God's talking about. Anger. Anger. There may be somebody here tonight that the Holy Spirit just talked to you and said somebody that you've been angry with for 10 years, 15 years. You need to get that right. If at all possible, get that right. You say, well, preacher, they don't even know. Then you get it right with God. See, it's not always the wisest thing to go call somebody up tonight and say, you know, 10 years ago you said something, I've been hating your guts ever since, and I can't believe, I can't believe you're still alive, and I can't believe you are so, what's a reprobate to say that? I hated you, and hated you, and hated you, but I got it right with God, and I'm feeling good. God bless you. Good night. <laughs> you feel great, but they're going to be miserable. Now, they've got the issue to carry for the next 10 years. So I'm not saying you do that. You have to let the Spirit lead on whether you need to call or deal with folks, but you need to get it right with God. You need to get it right with God. And so, let's take those steps. Sunday school teachers, pastors, choir, let's make sure our hearts are right. So we have the, the altar sacrilege there at the altar. Boy, how many times have we been not right in our hearts and still continued to try to serve God? Very quickly, we find with this angry spirit, we find the answer sought. The answer sought. God says, here's what you need to do. Here's, he said, as we look at this anger, this, this anger that's basically the same as murder, this anger that brings out the speech that's wrong, this anger that makes us do sacrilege and at the altar where we're just not right with our neighbor, not right with our brother, and we've still got the spirit inside of us that's right, but we still try to worship like that when he said, when I see that, he said, there is an answer sought. Verse 25. Agree with thy adversary quickly. So he's telling you, go deal with this with your brother and be reconciled to your brother. Then come offer the gift. Agree with thine adversary. That could well be that brother that has ought against us. Quickly, whilst thou art in the way, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and then be cast in the prison. First of all, let's get it taken care of. Number one, promptly. Get it done promptly. Notice what he says. So you leave the altar, leave your gift at the altar, go be reconciled to brother, then come offer the gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly. Do it quickly. See, the, we're in danger when we let sin rest in our heart. We let anger rest on our heart. That's what, the, what God warned us about. He said, we cause us a fool. We did. Let's get it done. That's why the Bible says, let not the sun go down on your wrath. We better deal with our anger quickly. Quickly. When class? Quickly. Very promptly. Get it done. Before it gets worse. Before it gets worse. Ephesians 4.30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking. Well, that sounds all anger stuff to me. Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. Be put away with you with all malice. 
That's in context of what? Not grieving the Holy Spirit. So we better, if we want the leading of the Spirit, the power of the Spirit, the filling of the Spirit, we have to make sure our hearts are right. But let's, let's don't grieve the Spirit with anger and evil speaking. Let's get it right quickly. Amen? Let's keep a short accounts with God. Do not let it linger. Do not let it build. Do not go. When the Holy Spirit points something out, deal with it. When the Holy Spirit says that's a sin in your life, deal with it. When the Holy Spirit says you need to deal with this over here or help this person over here, let's just make sure we're obedient quickly. So, the answer is sought. He said, listen, you've got this issue going. Agree with your adversary quickly. So we must do it promptly before it gets worse. Hebrews 12, 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and hereby many ought be defiled. Oh, before it's too late, deal with it promptly. Number two, deal with it properly. Deal with it properly. We're not going to teach on it much, but flip over to Matthew 18. You're here in Matthew. Flip over 18. I teach this in many venues with our school and in our uh, new members class and things like that, different places. This, this, this would save so many problems in your life if we just do Matthew 18. Matthew 18. Verse number 15. Moreover, if thy brother trespass against thee, go tell him his fault between thee and him. What's the next word? Alone. Alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. And we're not going to go through the rest of it tonight, but here's the old deal. The whole goal is to gain your brother. Not to punish your brother. Not to say I won. Not to prove I was right, but to gain the brother. Not just to make me feel better, but to gain the brother. It means we go humbly. We go simply. Let's just get it taken care of properly, scripturally. Don't gossip about it. Don't talk about it to other people. Go and deal with it with the brother. That's if you, if you, if you have to. The best thing is the Apostle Paul says, just take the wrong. Just take the wrong. Remember they were suing each other at the law and he said, that's wrong. He said, can't you just rather take the wrong than take the problem to the, to the loss? Yeah, there may be issues you need to deal with if, if they're being crooked, if they're hurting themselves or hurt other people. But if it's just I got my feelings hurt, just take the wrong. Just take the wrong. But deal with it properly. Properly, very quickly. Deal, it, deal with it as a priority. As a priority. Romans twelve seventeen Recompense no man evil for evil. Nope, don't do it. Don't do it. They do it to you, don't do it back. Provide things honest in the sight of all men, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you. And I've told you that before. That means that with all you've got, if it's at all possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. Don't let anger come in. Don't let the wrath come. Give over. Get that out of your heart. Get that out of your spirit. Get that out of your mind. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. So it's a priority. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Jesus Christ came, reconciling us to God. So let's seek the answer promptly. Well, I, I, I think I'll just stay angry for, a, angry for a month. No. Promptly. Now, properly, scripturally, and put it as a priority. As a priority. Oh, our anger. Verse 22, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Whosoever say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, let's be careful about an angry spirit. An angry spirit. You can hide the actions, but God looks on the heart. Let's bow our heads, please.